This is the Patino Chronicles. The Big East Tournament. I look at it as the event before the NCAA tournament. It's been at the Garden every year since 1983. It is an institution. The roars of the school's fans. How much are you looking forward to coaching in that week, being a part of that week again? It is the most special tournament in all college basketball. Remember, you know, back when I first started 48 years ago, basketball and football were on the same plane. Uh, one was no more popular than the other. Last year, the NBA championship would get the ratings of a bad college football game on Saturday. Football has become humongous on, on the level of viewership. College and professional basketball can't even touch it. But the greatest thing about the Big East, we're not making, we're not taking a person from Seton Hall and tell them to go travel to Washington so and tell them the lacrosse player, the soccer player, the, the female volleyball player, look, you're going to have to wait at the airport six, seven hours. Then you're going to take five hour flight. We're not doing any of that. We're the Big East and football does not dominate the Big East. Now, I'm not knocking football when I say this. We are dominated by basketball and at Madison Square Garden, the greatest tournament of all the conferences. So it's something special to be part of the Big East where you don't travel five hours and wait at the airport three or four hours. And there is still some sanity left in the Big East. There have been coaches who have said, when you win the Big East tournament, the level of satisfaction sometimes is as much as if you go on an NCAA tournament run, if not more, depending on how that run goes, because you're going to see those coaches at the spring meetings, you're going to be talking about in the offseason. It's like being the best in your neighborhood. How would you reflect on the feeling when you are the center of New York City on a Saturday night at the Garden winning the Big East Tournament? Well, it's funny, John. The first one we won, the one back-to-back, we celebrated, and it was a great victory. The second one, we came off a five-overtime loss to Notre Dame. And I told the team, we're going to win the next 17 straight. We're going to win this national championship. And right after that, five overtime loss. When we got to the garden, my speech was this. We're winning this thing back to back. Don't anybody, when they lower those rims, nobody goes, goes after those nets. Let's get in the locker room. Let's go celebrate. But we are not cutting down the nets. We're not cutting down the nets. Then sweet 16 final four. We're only cutting down the nets when this thing ends with a national championship. And sure enough, those rims were lowered. We were in the locker room. Sweet 16, they were lowered, we were in the locker room. Final four, they lowered it, we were in the locker room until we won and cut Mm. down those nets. You talk about the standards, the things that you emphasize with your program. Any, Any school that you've taken over at, and you have said the biggest thing that you want to stress to your men is player development, that you can develop them to a level that no one else can. Where does that come from? Well, I just think it's the time. You see, you only have 20 hours. So I take 45 minutes, 42 minutes, actually, each and every day for the last 35, 40 years. I take four players at a time, sometimes two players. And all I do is work on their offensive development. That started with me at the five-star basketball camp back in the uh, mid to late 70s, where I ran uh, this thing called Station 13, where people had an optional choice to come and work out with me or just rest. And that turned into player development for me. So each and every morning, my players will come and we will work on their offensive skills. We don't, we rarely get into defense. This is just their time to hone up their offensive skills, improve, get better, grow as a basketball player. So we shorten our afternoon practice to make up for those, the player development part. And they love it. I love teaching it. I'm in my gym shorts from eight o'clock to six o'clock, just working on, on basketball. I don't do any office work at all. I don't write emails. I don't answer phone calls. I 
I just, I go to my office less than an hour a day. It's all basketball. So that's what player development's all about. And that's why people come to play for me because it's not, I'm not any better than you mentioned Kevin Willard or, or, or any of the coaches in the biggies. We're all the same. We all have our systems that we run in the afternoon, but what I hope separates me is the amount of time I spend with them individually on the court. When you do go home, what do you do? I play with my, my dog, uh, quite a bit. We hang out together. I talk to my dog and your dog's name, Gigi. And she just loves the hell out of me. And we sit together and watch basketball. She sits on my lap and then I walk her. I come back in. We watch some more basketball. We, uh, I give her a couple of treats, take her for a walk. My wife says, put it to bed. I don't put it to bed. She, I said, we got one more half to watch. <laughs> and, uh, so Gigi and I spend most evenings together. He's the hall of famer. And this has been Fox sports presentation of the Patino Chronicles. Rick, thank you for the time. Thanks, John. <laughs> 